Linda Oakley's provocative question why have there been no great women artists, posed in her groundbreaking 1971 essay of the same name, will resonate with visitors to the exhibition Rembrandt and the Dutch Golden Age, masterpieces from the Rijeks Museum. It presents a survey of 17th century Dutch art, which includes only two women amongst the 50 or so artists represented. One of these artists, Rachel Rusk, attracted much attention from visitors on the day I attended the exhibition. While few recognized her name, those I spoke with were more than prepared to label her painting, Still Life with Flowers in a Glass Vase of 171 6, a great work of art. Why then have the talents of women artists like Rusk not been more widely acknowledged? Partially, this is due to a long history of, at best, neglect of women artists. Until recently, women were regularly blocked from pursuing a career in the arts. Consequently, few managed to establish themselves as professional artists. Rusk was one of the few successful women artists of her age. Born in The Hague in 1664, she gained international renown as a painter. Such was her reputation that her paintings regularly garnered prices in excess of most of Rembrandt's, the headliner for the Rijeks Museum show. Knowing Ruska's reputation in her own lifetime challenges the notion that the neglect of women artists can somehow be located exclusively within the past, when, it may be presumed, people were less enlightened than we are now. We too are to blame for generations of critics and historians have been unable to effectively establish artists like Rusk within the key narratives of art history. This is, in part, due to the fact that women had very different experiences from the majority of male artists. For instance, women rarely had access to the human body to make anatomical studies. This made it problematic for women to paint in some genres. Rusk mostly painted bouquets of flowers, a subject matter that, to us, may seem less capable of providing deep commentary on the human condition than, say, a self-portrait by Rembrandt. Rusk's flowers are not beautiful distractions from a more serious art culture, however. They connect with deep cultural and philosophical values. A flourishing mercantile culture brought great wealth to the Dutch Republic, and with it, a taste for luxury goods. Tulip mania swept the Republic, with tulip bulbs fetching vast sums. Tulips could, almost unbelievably, sell for the same price as a house. Ruska's family had a particular connection with flowers. Her father, Frederick Rusk, was a renowned professor of anatomy and botany. Ruska's careful observation of the characteristics of flowers in her paintings speaks to a wider social investment in them as well as the intellectual interests of her family, who valued innovations in empirical and scientific thinking. Ruska's purpose in painting flowers is made clear through the recognition of a complex series of viewing experiences in still life with flowers. Individual flower species are carefully rendered, to be easily identifiable. Complex Symbolism